name is Kathleen Thompson. I'm 68 and I was diagnosed with myeloma about four and a half years ago. You know, there was a chromosomal abnormality that puts me in the high risk category of multiple myeloma. Immunotherapy um, has been around for 20 or 30 years, but um, it's only really been in the past two to three years that I think it's really reached the forefront of, of, uh, of excitement. And that has been in part due to the fact that we now have uh, therapies in immunotherapy that are actually showing clinical benefits. Realizing what this disease entails, um, if there's something that can help my immune system to do what it's supposed to do, uh, then I am 100% behind that. It's an area of an unmet need. It's an area in which, for the most part, um, standard chemotherapy and even high-dose chemotherapy have failed to show a measurable clinical benefits. And so the idea would be to superimpose chemotherapy with immunotherapy could potentially make an impact in a disease for which we need to improve the current approaches. The philosophy behind it is outstanding. I mean, if, if our own body can be taught to better fight these diseases, that has to be a better approach than just going through with, with standard chemotherapy treatment. Some of these aspects we've seen rather dramatic clinical responses in patients that have basically uh, refractory disease. So these are patients for whom there were very little other options that have had dramatic responses to, um, to this. A benefit of this is that it is a very targeted therapy in many cases and actually has memory. I mean, the same concept by which you can vaccinate a child and they can still be protected against that vaccine well into their adult years. The same concept theoretically could be true with, with any kind of immunotherapy, that the therapy can persist over an extended period of time. And so I think taken together with a relatively minimal toxicity, patients aren't losing their hair, they're not throwing up as a result of the immunotherapy. The immunotherapy was something that was relatively new to me and was part of the stem cell transplant. Uh, my procedure was a fairly common autologous stem cell transplant where they harvested my own stem cells, uh, a lot of chemo, uh, and then the stem cells are reinfused. The immunotherapy part of it was a couple days after that, uh, and Dr. Borello and I assume others that practice it call it MILS, marrow infiltrating lymphocytes. And they were injected a couple of days after the standard stem cell transplant was completed. What high dose chemotherapy does is that it wipes out the immune system. And so just like our liver has a pre-established size, and if you chop out half of the liver, the liver will then grow back to its uh, natural size. The same thing is true with the lymphocytes in the body. There are a certain number of lymphocytes in the body, and so you can imagine them as being a glass filled with these cells. And if you empty the glass out by giving high-dose chemotherapy and then put in a, just a few cells that would only fill it up, say, 10%, the natural process of trying to reestablish the original size of the lymphocyte population will basically allow for these cells to further expand in the patient in addition to having expanded in, in the laboratory. And so the benefit of combining chemotherapy with, with uh, MILS or any other T-cell therapy is that um, this process of what we call lymphoablation, of wiping out the lymphocytes of the patient, allows us to further magnify the effect of the T cells that we potentially are giving the patient. And that is one of the major reasons why most T cell therapies right now are being given in combination with chemotherapy. MILS are marrow infiltrating lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are T cells or immune cells and we got, got them out of the bone marrow. We initially hypothesized that we would find more myeloma-specific uh, lymphocytes or, or immune cells in the site where the myeloma resides, which is the bone marrow. These mills will help train my immune system to better target the myeloma uh, and fight it naturally with the aid of only minimal ongoing treatment. So far, I, I'm pleased with what's happened for a couple of reasons. One is it seems to have strengthened my immune system a little bit in such a fashion that I got through last winter without having any colds or flu, which was a first for me, I think, in my life. Uh, also, the ongoing treatment that I have as a part of this is a very low dose of only the Revlimid uh, that I had taken previously and subsequently went off but no steroids are involved at this point. My immune system is compromised from this 
cancer and anything that's going to help my immune system to, to, to deal with that and keep me um, cancer free, um, then that makes sense to me. One of the things that we believe is, is really critical is the fact that mills are cells that intrinsically recognize many, many different proteins, also known as antigens, that are present on the surface of, of myeloma cells. The bone marrow is actually a very interesting immune environment where not only is tumor in there, um, and therefore the cells would be more tumor specific, T cells can only be taken from a patient and given back to a patient. And in that sense, it's personalized because it's a patient-specific product. It's all very exciting, and, and the, the research that's behind it, not just for myeloma but other cancers, is really exciting. I think in a randomized trial, we're hopefully poised to see you know, what the overall added benefit is of this combined approach. So being a part of the trial was, was really a special thing to me. To be a part of something that could be life-changing like that, life-saving <laughs> more so, um, is, you know, wonderful. I had a, a checkup with Dr. Borello a week ago. Uh, my numbers are all good. And uh, as I've gone through the course of the transplant and the mills and recovering from all of that and learning more about immunotherapy, I know that this is a, a very positive field in the treatment of not just myeloma, but other cancers and I assume other chronic diseases as well. And I think for all of us that suffer from any form of cancer, it's something that, that we're watching very carefully and have a very, very uh, strong belief and hope that it, it will mean something for all of us and for people in the future too.